At the end of the 19th century, Ferdinand Cheval, a postman at Haute-Rive, erected day after day for 33 years of relentless labour the castle of his dreams, an unusual surrealist castle which he called his ideal palace. How did a man do that all alone for 33 years? He would work all day and then work most of the night up there on a rickety scaffold, hauling up tons of stones and sacks of cement and realize his dream, which in itself would be useless. The only thing it was any good for was for getting lots of questions from the people around him and all they did was to say that he was mad, Cheval the madman. But I'm not so sure it was as simple as that. Cheval was certainly someone who was very introverted and solitary, but not mad. He simply lived in a world of his own. Cheval was born in 1836 and was the son of a peasant. It was his brother who stayed on the family farm. Ferdinand Cheval stayed and worked the land on the family farm until he was obliged to leave and look for his living elsewhere. Cheval, who had worked a little bit of the land of his parents, was obliged to leave and look for his living elsewhere. He started by being a peasant who rented his arms, which was the custom in 19th century France. He worked on a farm and then he became a baker for some years, which was very interesting, because he learned how to work with dough and make shapes. And later he worked with another kind of dough made of lime, sand, cement and stone. And we retrouve a little bit of the façonnage of the dough, then not with the pâte, but with another pâte, the one made of dough. Un peu de ciment et de sable et avec des avec des pierres et il façonne des formes. Donc il est boulanger et il devient piéton des postes. Il fallait un facteur supplémentaire et donc on a proposé Ferdinand Cheval. Il a eu son certificat de moralité délivré par le maire. After being a baker, he became a postman and when he received his certificate of morality from the mayor, he moved up a grade to be factor in the post office. He had to work every day except the 14th of July, Republic Day. It was the day of the Republic. Cheval was really a marathonian. He would do it every day between 30 and 40 kilometers on foot to distribute his courier. And Cheval, for this... Cheval was really a marathon man. He walked 30 to 40 kilometers every day delivering the post. And whilst he was walking, he had time to dream. Cheval recounts that when you walk every day through the same Decor, you dream, and so his work as a postman was very important to his future. Donc, ce métier de facteur pour Cheval a beaucoup d'importance et de sens pour la suite de son travail. Alors, la suite de son travail, il a démarré un jour du mois d'avril 1879. Son pied a buté sur une pierre. So one day in April 1879, his foot tripped on a stone, which had a bizarre shape, and it reminded him of his dream that he'd been nourishing for years of strange grottoes, castles, and imaginary palaces. Sur cette forme de, sur ce rocher, sur cette rocaille qu'il a fait dans son, dans son jardin potager, et donc cheval. À partir du moment où il tombe, Cheval, when he fell, was reminded that it was nature that had formed this sculpture, this rock with this extraordinary shape, and he decided he would do the masonry work. Mais Cheval n'est ni architecte ni maçon, pas encore. But Cheval was not a mason nor an architect, not yet at least. When you look at the structure, you realize that Cheval was a self-taught architect and a mason, for he'd made it with his own hands. And above all, he was a formidable sculptor. He was an artist and has a place in the history of art. He was the precursor of many intellectuals, in particular the surrealists, the self-taught and the builders of the imaginary. And so, from the month of April 1879, the neighbors planting their leeks and carrots would see Ferdinand Cheval, who they knew, arriving with his wheelbarrow and watched how he placed the stone and how his design started to form, the little design he had hastily sketched of his dream of the grottoes and castles. He started with the part that is called the source of life, which was a sort of fountain. Next to it was another grotto called the source of Saint Amédée, which in the style of the self-taught was placed symmetrically opposite. 
Little by little, the form of the East Side Palace began to emerge. Cette grotte de Saint Amédée, en faisant d'autres formes, donc il met en place petit à petit, symétriquement autour, d'autres formes, et petit à petit, la façade est est en train de prendre forme. The East Side of the Palace took him 20 years to complete, from 1879 to 1899, 20 years of work. The ornamental part made up largely by stones that had been weathered by water and the wind, which were fragile but still beautiful stones, gave the impression of animals, and one asked oneself what was the work of nature and what was the work of Ferdinand Cheval. Et on se demande toujours où est le travail de la nature, où est le travail de Cheval. Cheval a choisi des pierres qui lui ont amené des formes. Cheval had chosen the stones that fitted his imagination. He placed them where they slotted into his design. He chose these stones like a poet chooses his words, not by chance. Words that meant something to him from their sound and their rhythm. Et Cheval, c'est un peu ça. Il choisit la pierre. Cheval was a bit like that. A stone meant something to him, and was something which gave a rhythm and form to his monument. He wrote poems with his stones. Bernard Catlin started to paint when he was 14 years old, and if he is today recognized as one of the grand masters of our period, he owes it to his mother, his art teacher, and the Drome, where he has his roots. It is this countryside where he passed his summers that inspired his work and nourished the colors of his paintings. His painting is sincere and without artifice, and expresses the deep feeling that exists between man and the countryside in which he lives. I knew a drone which was a lot less operette than that. Oui, 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 operette. But for a creator like yourself, you've always lived in the Drome, and that's extraordinary. It must be that the Drome inspires you. Yes, that's very true. It's the country of my roots, and I need to come back here. There, there are metal wires for the picador. It's livelier, more than a canvas. There are 50 different ones, and we wove more than 250. Yes, it's true, the Guinness record. The record Guinness. The countries that impressed me more than the rest were Mexico for the colors and Japan for its reflection, for its simplicity. Oui, oui, ça, je, 
J'ai la chance d'avoir des racines, mais ces racines sont très fortes. You are really a man of your country here. Yes, I had the luck to have roots, and the roots are very strong. I've been very lucky in my life, and I had the chance to have an ideal mother. She was very beautiful, and she put me on the path to beauty. La Drôme, un splendide département qui, qui a des points de ressemblance avec les, les plus beaux. The Drome is a splendid department, which has views which compare with the most beautiful parts of Italy. It has countryside and skies which are superb. For my work, I insist on skies and clouds, and here I am spoiled because above the Verco there are immense rocks and immense clouds, and the cliff of Grandas, which is a mountain which stands above D. C'était une montagne au-dessus de, de D, et qui, qui est aussi émouvante par son côté solitaire. It's moving because it's a solitary mountain. It was there when I was young a long time ago. I accompanied the sheep which pass like a river on their annual journey to the high pastures. Here you have lavender. Lavender. There is a mysterious world surrounding lavender. It's not possible to say exactly what it is. The color of the fields, the wind in the fields, it smells good. It's a miraculous plant. Soyen, a little village perched above the valley of the Rubion, is itself dominated by the ruins of a Renaissance castle. This castle was pillaged and burnt in 1796, as was the Romanesque church dedicated to Saint Marcel, one of the first bishops of D. Reworked in the 17th and 18th century, it is decorated with a glorious 19th century painting of a dove surrounded by the heads of angels. Down below in the village, in the little chapel of Saint Philomène, Françoise Vigneur Cahier has created an extraordinary museum of 3,000 eggs. From the minuscule egg of the hummingbird to the 70 million year old dinosaur egg, and in passing, lace eggs, painted eggs, sculptured eggs, engraved eggs, embroidered eggs, and lots of others. Which arrived first, the egg or the chicken? That's a question that everyone asks. I asked the same question of Hubert Reeve, an astrophysicist. He said that the philosophers of the Middle Ages were already asking that question. They said the chicken was in the egg and the egg was in the chicken. That answers the question completely, philosophically speaking. And later it was discovered that the genes of the egg were also the genes of the chicken. In the book of Genesis, at the beginning of the world, there was an egg, a woman and the sky. The sunflower is there because the woman represents color and warmth, a dove because the woman represents peace, and what comes from the woman's head is intelligence and hope. Here is some bobbin lace. It's cloth lace and all the little bobbins are mounted directly on the egg. They made their designs directly on the egg. Oui. Un œuf de Nandou, une petite autruche.
That's an ostrich egg. It's a natural egg. It's embroidered from the inside of the egg. The man took a long needle, made a hole in the bottom, and then made his holes in the side of the egg. That's all sculpted from a plane tree. That's the trunk which we keep for a stand. The egg was sculpted in the form of an Easter egg. That's one egg. He cut the stand and all the bits from one tree. That's only one egg. He made the stand at the top and the bottom from one egg and all the bits too. Have you got recipes for eggs? Recipes, yes. I also have a witch's garden. There we have recipes for eggs and forgotten plants. J'arrive, Lucas, je vais te prendre. Va te prendre. Va te prendre. Qui est cette cette dame? Who's this woman here? That's our service witch. She watches everyone. And what's her name? Fransou. She's nice. Which Fransou? Don't touch. That's a bean we grow from seed, which grows to a meter long and is known as the kilometer bean because it grows so long. It's magic. Yes, it's magic. We have two. Here's the bean called after Jack. That's the real Jack bean. Are you absolutely sure, Francois? Absolutely sure. They say that. There you are. There are lots of other things. What beautiful countryside! Yes, it's magnificent. This valley is truly astonishing. In the spring, it makes red points. That's why it's called the bottle washer. That's called the devil's guts. Why the devil's guts? Because it's not really toxic, but if you ate it, it would give you terrible diarrhea. Herb of grass. That's herb de grass, which is a plant that's abortive. If you've taken too much of anything, it will bring you relief. The cigarette there, that's called the cigarette plant. If you look closely, you can see the burning cigarette. That's very good. Yes, that's peppermint. The castle of Olin, whose origin dates from the 12th century, is situated at the foot of Mont Ventoux and dominates the gorge of Toulorenc. Today's owner, Count Charles Suarez de Olin, has reconstructed it with his own hands. You've restored this castle. It was a complete ruin. It's a property that's been in the family since 1313. 1313. 1313. In the process of inheritance, my grandfather died in 1915. My father was at the front in the war of 1914, and he appointed a lawyer in Paris to arrange his affairs. And the lawyer, seeing that there was a good collection, stole everything and sold it at auction in Avignon. He 
Il a tout fait vendre sur la place publique d'Avignon. Alors je reviens ici en 1933. I came here in 1923 to a ruin where there wasn't a mattress, a knife or a fork. I had 5,000 francs in my pocket and a builder's mixing bowl. When my parents saw that, they all gave me presents for the reconstruction of Hollande. They gave me pictures and lots of family objects. It must have been an enormous work. An enormous work. I put on lots of slates and tiles. I'd always worked in public works, and when I made money, I always invested it in Olon. Why did your family come to this place? It was a good place to defend the valley. It was of strategic importance. I passed my 80th birthday between sea and sky in an aeroplane. I won a competition. On the chest of drawers is a bust of my grandmother, the Marquise of Oulon, who was one of the ladies in waiting to the Empress Eugenie. That's my maternal grandmother, the Marquise of Bain-Maurice. Françoise Ladurel lived in Vienne on the banks of the Rhone. He went to Tuscany where he found volcanic smoke. He had the idea of using this smoke industrially. He found he could evaporate certain sulfur substitutes and afterwards he recovered boracic acid, sulfur, phosphorus and all sorts of products. Women couldn't work in the factories because of the heat. He went to Saint-Étienne where he piled looms to run on volcano smoke. He was a pioneer. My uncle Pichonori had the idea of using this volcano smoke to power dynamos. Light bulbs were lit and he decided to abandon chemicals for electricity. Mussolini found the idea interesting and pushed the family out, and so the idea that Françoise Dorel thought of finally created 18 central electricity plants, which powered the whole Italian railway network. That's extraordinary. Yes, extraordinary. My great-grandfather, my great-grandmother, who created the thermal baths at Montbrun. This picture was in my parents' house. My brother inherited it, and my niece gave it to me for my 80th birthday. The pastel is of my grandfather, Marquis of Hollande, who was equerry to Napoleon III. This is a unique piece. It's a compilation of various calendars, Julian, Greek, Roman, Egyptian and Gregorian. The Order of Mont Blanc is embroidered on the marriage robe of Oulon. In this cellar is the cowl of Pope Pius IX. The little golden statue is saint Canin, bishop and patron of Vaison. A statue in bronze of my grandfather in the uniform of equerry to Napoleon III. Is this your room? Do you sleep here? Yes, there are lots of souvenirs. Yes, it was a ruin. But how did you do all that? Worked all my life to do it. You did it with your own hands, a lot of it, yes. The carrying chair of my mother's family, which my grandmother, the Marquise of Beaumaris, used in Carpentras. Monsieur le Comte, what is that? Monsieur le Comte, qu'est-ce que c'est ça? It's to put burning coals or wood in to warm the feet under the table. That's my christening robe for my children, my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. 
This picture comes from the chapel of a church depicting the miracle of Saint Baptiste. On la porte sur une civière, elle ressuscite et se dirige vers une église. The little boy sitting on the step is the brother of my mother. I didn't reconstruct it, I reinstated it. I tried to reinstate it as it was before. Are you Carolus? Charles. 